Okay, hi. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, this is my first ever JS Foo talk and pretty glad and happy to be here. Uh, happy to also see some faces that I have seen before and interacted to. Uh, for the people who do not know me, uh, you will know me in, in, in like a moment. So I have like 45 minutes and starting like a, a minute earlier. So without much speaking, I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about actually looking at other people's work, deconstruct them and reconstruct them. That's because my imagination sometimes sort of lets me down so that I cannot come up with any of the cool stuff all by myself. But whenever somebody does something really cool, I want to look at that and try to reconstruct it. So I structured this talk entirely around something like that which affected me significantly in the last couple of months, an application that I saw on the internet. I thought, what the hell, let's do this again and see how well we can do this and how quickly can we get to something like this. So that's my talk. That's code. Let's build a data visualization in 30 minutes. Uh, that was a typographic error. I meant 45 minutes, but <laughs> let's 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 see. So um, quickly, <laughs> that's me. My name is Hari Sivaram Krishnan. I am uh, the random web guy at a company called Adobe. Uh, my designation is uh, uh, developer, web, web developer evangelist. I'm also a musician. I moonwalk with my band Agam. Uh, I'll plug on that later. I'm a huge Dream Theater fan, and most importantly, I'm an overall nice guy. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, uh, right. So, uh, here is uh, the deal. This presentation is all code. Of course, I'll be talking. I've got only like 40 minutes to do this. Blink and you'll definitely miss something. So, you've had a nice lunch and you want to actually crash out or think about life in general, call your girlfriend, text her, figure out, do it. But you're not going to be able to come back and see what I did because I'm not going to go back. Purely because Billy is going to come looking at me uh, if I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to stop. And that also means I... Yeah, like the yawning is allowed. Well, first can do that, but any sort of physical abuse, assault, throwing chuckles is not allowed. <laughs> right? Because it's on video and I don't want this to go viral. And feel free to interrupt me, however. Even though that would have a bearing on, you know, sort of where I will end up with this talk. Right, so that is with the, the intro madness. Uh, I'll show you what inspired me to do this talk. Have you seen this application? Stop looking at the lady on the left and start looking at the visualization on the right. <laughs> do it now. Do it. Uh. <laughs> All right, so uh, this talk is not about Rebecca Black, but it is about the visualization that sits to the right of it. So this, has got, this, this page has got a lot of massively beautiful visualization. See this one? I have seen several, several, several um, great visualization projects happening. You know, they have like serious data crunching. They have like you know a lot of complex structure. But what really impressed me in this is the simplicity of that. It's nothing but a column chart, like you know a column chart with a with a graphic asset, a column chart that comes forward. Uh, and, and what would it really take to actually build something which looks this beautiful? You know, for me, anybody who thinks this is actually ugly, speak your mind now. Who thinks this is beautiful? I want hands to go up. Depends on what you're comparing. Huh? Depends on what you're comparing. I'm not comparing it with Rebecca Black. Rebecca Black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. So that means we are all uh, com we all completely understand why we are sitting in this talk, right? Okay. So secondly, now I don't have like bleeding bleeding edge stuff here. Like you know, sometimes open web conferences are also about that. Like you know, stuff that is really going to change the world in the next 10 years. These are the things that was changed in the last 10 years ago. I was writing the same code 90s as well. So this is like simple JavaScript, simple HTML, and some customary jQuery. Apparently, if I don't write a dollar sign on my code, it doesn't run. So I'm going to just add jQuery to create a document dot ready. But it's just pure JavaScript and HTML. And let me show you what I'm going to end up with. Okay. So, so this is what I did. I recreated the whole demo. This is the application that we saw on that. It's just a snapshot of that. But this is what I will end up with today. In the next, how many minutes? 30. Ah, uh, 30, man. What? All right, fine. I'll give you 35. Ah, okay. Much better. Okay, that is with the talking. And, uh, right. Request you to pay attention and hold off your questions. And if there's something completely incorrect that I'm doing, like not putting a semicolon, not declaring a variable, say that immediately. You can interrupt them. If I'm doing everything right and things seem to work, do not interrupt, because you can interrupt me after I'm done with the demo. Got me all of us? Yes. 
I just heard four people. Can I say yes? Yes. 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 Brilliant. Thank you very much. I, I hate doing this college teacher thing, but uh, uh, I hold this against Billy and Kir, uh, Kiran for hold, throwing me at the post lunch session. So that's fine. Okay. The editor I'm going to use is called Sublime Text, right? And I have to start with Hannah. Can you see this? Uh, so it's a simple HTML file with a, with, a, with, with a simple template in there because this talk is not about writing HTML markup. So I've just thrown the markup already in there. I have linked three libraries here. A library called easel.js. Anybody heard about it? Anybody used it here? Brilliant. Want to. Flash guy. Maybe? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Grand Skinner is a flash guy too. I was an else file flash guy. Okay, beat me up now. Huh. And I'm using a library called Tween.js, which is also built by the same guy. And of course, everybody knows jQuery, right? So those are the three libraries I'm using. I've also cooked up a style sheet to just make my chart look nice. And I, I'm happy to share the style sheet. The, the score is already on GitHub, so you can go and take a look at it. But let us just get started by running this, yeah? Just to make sure that I'm not cheating. That's all I got. Just an image and a rectangle. Okay, now I want somebody from the audience and not Billy to time me every five minutes. Who's gonna do that? Timing me in five minutes is a simple thing to do. Yes sir, brilliant. Every five minutes you say, dude, your, your five minutes is up, right? Perfect, less talking and more coding. Let me get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is like I said, do my, they say in Tamil, like, you know, so I'm gonna do my customary jQuery call. Anytime I'm making a typographic error, I'm very prone to that. So just let me know so that I can save up that time. Okay, so here is how we will access this problem. Let's actually look at this demo once again, very quickly. So what, what is this all about? It is a chart with columns that animate, right? You see the columns actually animate and the line that extrapolates, correct? That's what this demo is all about. So this demo can be split into the following parts, right? you need to get those graphic assets to actually work really nicely. You can see that there's no pixelation, there's no, uh, you know, crunching, it's like actually really nice. So, so that is the first step. The second step is to actually get these animations going, right? So let me just get started and uh, that is the reason why I'm using this framework called eCellJS. I'll pull up the link uh, at the end of the talk. It's a, it's a JavaScript <laughs> library which actually helps you program for Canvas in a more display object stage oriented way. Anybody from a uh, a display programming world, maybe Delphi or maybe any of those Flash or even Canvas would understand what this is. So let me create a function called inet. We need a few variables, right? So a variable which holds the canvas, a variable which holds the, the stage. Stage is nothing but the region where we are going to draw <coughs> all, the, all the graphics. It eventually contains the canvas, but stage is the area that goes. We need bitmaps. Right to show the the chart items. We also need some graphics to draw the lines. Correct. So those are the four variables I've just prepared. They're pretty simple and straight. Right now, let's come here and just get a reference to our canvas. Everybody understands this. If you if you don't, sometimes the trivial things I will not even say. Right now, I just need to. This is the common practice that I do. I don't typically style my canvas in the CSS. I sort of set it in my code. That's just a quirk with me. You can always do this, but let's just get this passed. Let's see, go to. This is the holder which contains the canvas. If you see the markup, there's a holder and the canvas sits inside it. I'm just going to do this. Remember, you don't have to do this. It's just that I'm doing this. Okay, so we have a canvas with the same size as the holder. There's a reason why I have the holder, that's for a more a UI like situation, otherwise, you could have just directly thrown the canvas, but I need the holder. Right, now let us start the easel stuff. So, we need a stage to draw our bitmaps and lines into. So, we create a instance of stage. This class comes from easel.js. Don't worry about it, just remember that it's called stage, and we will add the canvas to it. Fine, now 
as you understand any drawing application, anything that has got animations, they all have this concept called frames. Who understands what frames are? Don't understand what frames are. So we also understand what frames per second is. Yeah. So if you understand what frames are, if you understand what seconds are, you understand what frames per second are. So we are going to have a pretty optimistic view about the frames per second of this application. So I'm going to create an instance of a class called it's a static called ticker, which again comes from ESL and say set FPS. It is very ambitious. If you're running this on a mobile phone, you're not going to get this. See, nothing runs at 100 FPS, but I'm going to just show a demo and to make it like look really smooth and make me look really nice, 100 FPS. Yeah? And a listener onto window. So that every time there's like a frame change, or like an on-enter frame, you actually get to do something. And there is this one method that ESL exposes called tick. Any guesses what tick would be? Every every time the on enter frame the tick gets fired. And every time the tick gets fired, something in the stage has to change, right? Or otherwise, why, why are we listening to it? So if nothing is changing on the stage, you're not listening to this. So we will simply say stage dot. We are done with bootstrapping this thing. Right now we have a way to add a canvas onto the stage. We understand that when something changes, when a frame actually gets fired, we can actually do something inside the stick function. All right, Fair enough. Fast. Brilliant, you're really, you, you're awesome man. Five minutes passed, okay. Now, since we don't have an Ajax service, we don't have a, a, a good data source that I can connect to, I'm going to adopt a patented uh, a brilliant process of mine which is called generating dummy data. <laughs> I sort of have mastered that, that whole thing about dummy data. I create extremely imaginative dummy data. We'll see about that. And of course, typing dummy data is uh, beyond all our collective intelligence, so I'm gonna copy paste that. You can hold me responsible for that, but this is nothing. It actually has a for loop that runs across 16 elements and creates an object which has got an item called item 0, 1, 2 and create a property called to scale. It could ideally be percentages, right? A column chart is like, how much percentage can it go to? But uh, you know, uh, that's what it is. And uh, of course, we need a variable to hold that. Or... Correct. So we have the dummy data also set right now. Now, let us start doing some real stuff with all the bootstrapping and blur done. Now we need to start adding the chart items to the canvas, correct? So let me go to my init method and say, if I increase it any further, I'll find it hard to type here, but I'm gonna do that. <coughs> Can you see it? Okay. So, <coughs> as the name would indicate, we are going to add items to the canvas. So for adding items, we need to run a for loop, right? Any ambiguity here? Nothing. We are going to loop through the items and going to add as many items, correct? So for that, I'm going to do, okay, this talk is not about JavaScript coding best practices. So uh, please don't give me feedback on that. I will redeclare variables. I will uh, use whatever scoping I want because my job is to finish this in 30 minutes. I, uh, I, I'm happy to hear about my coding blunders, but not in perspective to the stuff. So I'm going to declare an image here and rest of it I'll copy paste. And I know that's a bad thing, but I'm going to do that. But you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I create a new image and set the source property. See, we are talking bitmaps here because those were like complicated graphics. I mean, you could actually do them with vectors. You could actually draw, you know, vectors of version that would be like a far uh, you know, more, far more fallen out process uh, for the glamour of the session. We will use bitmap assets. So, I have these assets. Don't wonder where they came from. I have them in my file system. So I have. We, so this this whole thing is what you have a bottom, then you have an area that scales, and then you have a cap. That's what the chart is, right? Agree, everybody agrees. Yes. Like the bottom doesn't scale, the top doesn't scale. <laughs> the mid portion kind of scales, and the cap sits on top of that, right? So now we create an image, and since an image cannot be directly added onto the canvas, ESL gives you a nice little way of figuring that out. So create a new bitmap and add an image to that, right? And then you will say, add child, what? Bitmap, right? Now, as every simple mathematical problem, you have to position them one after the other. I'm not going to teach you that algorithm, I'm simply going to do that. So for that, you need to start with a X position, set that to zero. So you are going to come down here and say, I 
I know the width of the ball is 30, I know that, that's why I'm doing this. That should do it, right? And correct. Now, after I've added this, I will call a I'm just going to update that onto the screen. Can we run this and see something at least on the screen? Would you Hopefully. Want to increment expose. Sorry? Do you want to increment expose? Oh, no, because I'm multiplying it with i. Alright, another 5 minutes. Dude, seriously? 55 seconds to this time. Hmm? 55 to 5 minutes. Mm -hmm. 55 seconds, seconds to 5 minutes. Okay, let's see. Does this look right, guys? Read the media. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I haven't called that. Correct. Now fine, so we have called the create dummy data and we have called all children. If it doesn't work, see I am doing it along with you guys, right? So I am bound to make mistakes, it's fine. <coughs> I am braving it. Okay, not bad. That's good. Now this is what I said. Good coding practices, later. Don't do this guys. Don't, don't do this in your real projects. This is actually a pitch, yeah? So yeah, so this should just work as well. Let's reload. Why position? Three hundred always fine. <laughs> right now, this is fine. This actually looks like the start point of the chart. Now, what is the next job? Scale to actually them. scale them, not just scale them, animate them. Scaling or done this? Just no, no. Just set the scale property. You have a chart done. Let's all go home. <laughs> it's about showing that whole animation and then showing the right extrapolation or that. Ten minutes, is it? Yeah. Who the guy is Really? Okay, never mind. We'll see. So, okay. So now, which one of these would scale? You tell me. The one in the middle scales, correct? Yes. The other one in the, stays in the bottom. The other guy positions himself on top. Correct. That's about it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to scale the guy in the middle. So I'm just going to keep track of them. So I create a just an array to hold the items that are going to scale. See, there are several ways of doing this. You can actually directly go and query the DOM to actually find that item. I simply like to hold the data structure. It actually comes from my background as an action script guy. I, I typically tend to, I mean, I, it's a confession. I've done Flash for like what, six years in my life. So there are certain practices that comes from me from Flash world, which I strongly believe are right. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing this. So let's go here and say scaling objects, start push, clip. Nothing, I'm just storing it. I'm just pushing it onto the array. And you should always remember to. Otherwise, you'll keep searching what happened, but you guys are good in pointing out them. We also need to hold the caps, right? The cap, the top gray guy. So let me. Right, and. Fair enough. It's just two arrays. One holds the scaling items, all 16 of them, and the other one holds the information about cap. Mind you, this is not a string. Mind you, this is not a, 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 an object. It is actually a reference to what is sitting on your canvas. See, when I say caps of i, it will actually point to the bitmap, the one which we added to the stage. That's why it is so powerful. Now, if you want to modify it, you can simply iterate onto these two loops and what the hell? Okay, sorry. Yep. I can pause here. Any questions until now? Seems all in target? Yep. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? We need to animate this. Right? Okay. So, that is where we need the tick function. Right? Because animation is a frame oriented process. Right? So, every time, or a timer oriented process. You can either think in terms of frames or in terms of <laughs> intervals. So, in, in, in the past, we will use something like a set interval. A lot of us have done that. You know, second rule is something which keeps firing at a particular interval, and you can do that. Uh, no harm in it. People in Mozilla will call you an idiot. He wants to. So, uh, other than that, second rule is also a fair thing to do. But here, I'm using Easel, which actually has handled the frame thing for me. So, I'm going to run another for loop. This time, through the scaling objects, right? So, what does this contain? So this contains 
correct and I can do this right everybody is like this the same all of them are running through the the, the length of items it's just that I'm persisting that there are two different uh, arrays that's all it's, it's just a convenience there are other ways of thinking about it you know create a complex object and kind of push it back into the same array you could do that go into items query the object add on to it or, or find your own way of doing this persist it but here it's plain simple dump uh, I'm gonna do that right that's fine and now what do we have to do five more minutes then okay that's 15 minutes yeah, uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20. Oh, oh, no, no problem. No problem. So... No pain, no pressure. <laughs> okay, so uh, where are we? So, sorry, I lost track. So, right now, we need to... So, anybody knows in a graphic, what is the registration point of a graphic is? Anybody knows what nine slicing is? Anybody knows what... So, you know what a registration point is? A registration point is the point where the... The, the the graphic would use to understand how he's going to scale right if the registration point is on the center of a graphic he will grow both ways if it is on the top of the graphic he will grow downwards if it's on the bottom of the graphic he's going to go upwards any questions that's fairly simple right so where should our registration point be in this case the bottom and a small secret tidbit for you guys that bottom image is height is so what should be the registration point? Seven would be a stretch because it will be at the deep bottom. So what it will do is it will actually leave a couple of pixels in the bottom and start growing that way. You will see that when you're actually using nothing like paint. Like if you actually stretch it beyond, it will actually leave like so. You put something which is close to seven. Something with it. I, I just came up with it. So if you put it at seven, it is at the bottommost pixel and that one pixel level will always show up as a gap. It's a minor detail. Anybody who's like doing graphic intensive stuff always remember your registration point is never at the absolute bottom. It's slightly above your bottom, which actually gives you a, a slightly better. Fine, that's that's fine. So, not cap, man. Clip. Right. So now, what do I need to do? So I need to do a simple little check if clip dot scale y, which is the current scaling, which is equal to one. Right. We are not scaling it at all. When we are adding it, everything is scaled as one is less than where did this come from it comes from here so if my current scaling is less than where it really needs to be this is the less than case we will simply say clip dot scale y plus equal to 0 0.5 that means till it reaches there keep incrementing now the other case else if Oh yes, thank you. You tell me. Minus. Huh? Minus equal to 0.5. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. He's a very kind guy. Right. So what would this do? If it is more, it will increase. If it is less, it will decrease. Even though this else condition will never fire in this case because we are not going to write the navigation. We are always going to keep refreshing, but it's a good thing if in case I get some extra time, I'll add that feature. Will I? No, I won't. <laughs> so, and finally, we have to position the cap, right? Mm -hmm. So, the cap has to be added on top of the scaled <laughs> objects, which is a simple trick. I know the bottom position is 300. Correct. Minus scale y. And height of the object that should do it right that is the difference from top and you will actually have a capsule hey these guys this is just mathematics i'm not going to tell you what i'm doing okay this is just plain math that everybody understands right are we feeling lucky yet who thinks this will work <laughs> put hands up yeah otherwise you don't think it doesn't work who thinks this works one two people pretty skeptics i say <laughs> why what have we done wrongly here you tell me i say <laughs> What is not being called? Oh, function. Oh, no, no. It's all being called. Let's see. Why ponder on something which we can see here? Yeah. <laughs> nice and non jerky and smooth and whatnot. Isn't that like really pretty? Prettier than Rebecca Black? <laughs> 20 minutes with ranting and talking and coding that shit works that's why sometimes you know 
You look at a great visualization and say, oh, some geek at Google would have done this. This no wonder these guys are paid so much. This app, this is bullshit. It's pretty simple. It's just that you need to sit down and reconstruct it. That's what we're doing here. Right? Programming is not always about geeking out. Like it's not about how you're gonna combine bootstrap.js and angular.js and bring a MVC pattern into it, what's going to be a templating. Sometimes it's not about any of that. Sometimes it's about writing stupid, straightforward JavaScript code. But we are not done yet. Are we? Let's go back and see where the pitch was. <coughs> the pitch has this nice little plots on top of it. 25 minutes done, 20 to go. Oh, okay. 15 to go, right? Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> we have. Okay, that's the thing, yeah? You saw that? So it has got those. Do you see that? I mean, it, it is pretty. The, the beauty is it's intricate. It is not all of them falling at one go. Do you observe that? They actually come like this. And then they animate up. Now, how far of that I'll be able to do right now, I'll see. But then, just, just, just look. And you can see that the, the, the interpolation is smooth as hell. Like, you know, confession again, I come from the Adobe Flash side of things where, you know, smoothness was never an issue. The issue was different. The issue was about memory, issue was about size, issue was about multi-platform, but this is this is good stuff. It is like really smooth and it 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 it, it, it runs it. What, what are we running at? 100, 100 FPS, right? Yeah. And, and it seems it seems fine. Maybe it's just doing 60, we'll never go to 100, but it's doing fine at 60, which is actually really good, right? Okay, enough about the pitch. Now let us do the damn plotting. <laughs> Not plotting, plotting. Right, so Copy paste as always. Plot.png. So we want the plot to be in the middle of every bar, right? We don't want it to be in the left corner. So another simple mathematics. Push it by five pixels. Right? So it will come in the middle. Right? Let's run this. That's not very nice. They're all standing in one room. And if you see in this, let's go back and look again. Falls down with that, right? So let us do a small little trick here. It's just a simple mathematical thing, okay? So I'm just gonna create a variable called y, uh, what is it called, man? Plot, no? Plot y. And set that to zero, okay? I'm gonna come down here. Okay, just setting it to plot by, and I'm going to do a small little thing, which is fine. First one here, second one here, third one here, fourth one here, fifth one here. Okay, I'm just sending them out of phase. It is, it is just your imagination of how that extra interpolation is working. Okay, there might be hundred other ways of doing this, but I'm just sending them in an ascending way so that only one is visible in the beginning. Fair enough. Now, as always, we need to hold this somewhere. So, creates a right. You tell me, what should I do? I'm saying add this thing and say have a property called two position and set it to zero. Fine. Now let's go to our. <coughs> we don't need to go to tick, right? We just have to move it. See, tick is for things that require to incrementally change. While a movement can be done using what is known as a, a tween. Correct. A tween is nothing but like a position increment. So interesting, you can do that inside the tick. But what I'm <coughs> using here is a library called uh, tween js. Okay, TwinJS is similar to uh, EaselJS in many ways. It's built by the same guy. So I'm gonna right. So what do we iterate on? Church. One second. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, what do we have here? We have the clip, right? Yeah. 
fine. This is just reading them back from that this thing. Now we'll just call tween dot get clip. This is the syntax of the library. So you can just you know which one you are tweening. You're tweening this one, and you're doing what? Do x doesn't change, correct? We're not going to change the x at all. We're only going to change the y, right? And y is correct. Correct. Okay, thank you. Right? We'll run this and see what we get. There should be an error. You need to have them in a demo. <coughs> so apparently not. So the y, y is incorrect. It's actually dropping to zero. Yeah. Oh, point. Point, man. Who is that? I could actually give you a goodie. It should be 300. They are actually coming from top. Yeah. Sorry, good catch. Good catch, but nothing happened. Lord point is also set to zero. And we take a No, that's, that's fine. It's, they, they all eventually need to come down to... Uh, oh, two, 300 minus... Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do something else. Okay, we got a bug. So, what should we do? We just need to get it onto the state somewhere, right? So, <coughs> should be fine, right? Nothing. Basically, I'm just finding a random coordinate in that space between 0 and 300. That's all. I mean, again, math, guys, don't. <laughs> well, let's see if this works. Some of should work, right? Also lasts 10 minutes. Oh. That means I have 5 more minutes. <coughs> Theoretically, right? Depends no. on the next speaker also. <laughs> okay. Can you, like, tell him to... What the hell, man? Somebody tell me, man. No, I don't add anything. So, I'm add it. so am I am I calling this method? Drop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Calling it right. Drop plot points. Have I pushed it into plots? Yes, I have. Have I declared it? Fine, man. We'll see what it. We're going to debug it now. Yeah. see what's happening. I have five more minutes, right? Yes. I have five minutes away, yeah, it should work. Hang on. People keep looking, man, if you see something incorrect. Do you see anything? Hang on. Anybody who's worked with tweens, can you tell me how a tween will work without giving a time to run the tween? My bad. How do I do this? Okay, so this I just want them to come, not come together. Like you see that it has got that easing motion, right? They all come in separate intervals. I just want to randomize that. That's the reason why I put this algorithm. You can just make it 100 and it should work. This should work, no? Hopefully. Yes, that's my boy. The plots are all working. Now we have a simple problem. Okay, all the all the math. Now you have to just draw lines between them. Correct. You just have to draw lines between them, and as the plot moves, the lines keep, needs to keep changing. So again, for want of a little bit time, I was intending to type this, but since we had this unrequired interruption, just see it, it's nothing. I was just creating the anybody who has done uh, 
canvas based programming it is just about setting graphics style and about the stroke styles and things like that let me go up here and uh, Yeah, I will huh? No, the line. This is just the line style. What you're what you're saying is right. So we'll we'll just do that. So now we need to draw the lines. What happens is like there are two things happening in concurrency here. Like the the, the plots are dropping. That also uses frames, and the lines are also going to use some sort of frames. So just to prevent that, both of them trying to override into each other, we'll just put a simple flag. This is just a what do you call sanity step. So we will not start drawing the line until the plotting is complete. It's a fair thing to do, right? Otherwise, you are doing too many things together and you don't know what is getting what scope. Just ensuring it again, right? Right. So now what we need to draw the lines after the plotting is complete. Fair thing to say. Like he correctly mentioned, you have to go to tick now. You have to go to the tick method. Come down here if. Plotting complete. Do the drawing madness. Correct. That drawing is yet again. I'm gonna. There's nothing earth shattering here. <coughs> Calling a G dot clear before doing anything is actually useful because in 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 certain other cases there might be rogue lines drawn into the screen and you might want to just clear them out before you are actually starting to draw something. But again, uh, a housekeeping customary step. In this particular case, it will work even without the G dot clear. But uh, and finally. I would have really loved to type this out. I want to take a few questions as well. So trace locations method, you can just look at it again, iterate through the list of plots and just calls a line to it. That plus eight and plus seven is because I didn't set the registration point of the of the plot. So it should be actually seven, eight this way and seven this way, just because I was lazy and I didn't want to write the code. I have not done that. That's why I'm doing this incrementing here. It's it's ugly, but then it's function, right? Let's go. We should be through now. First point. First point? Yeah, first point doesn't animate. I don't know why. <laughs> Something wrong with the browser, right? Yeah, it should be. It's never me. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the previous thing didn't work, it was something wrong with Diesel JS. That's why I'm throwing in frameworks, right? If I said I'm writing the whole damn thing, I'll be I'll be putting my neck in the line table. You know, on that note, I'm officially done. <laughs> Isn't that what I showed you in the beginning? What I agree to you guys? Almost. Yeah. No, it's not almost. This is what I agree to. Show. Oh, they have a drop. Oh, okay. How much? Okay, you cut my ten percent. I don't have time. But never mind. <laughs> I, I I can ask. How much? How much time do I have, man? Uh, let's see. You act. You have three minutes. Can you copy paste it? <laughs> see, honestly, I know what to do. Instead of first, I will run this and set this to zero. It will all come down. I'll again because we call that it will actually go. Okay. Not a programming talk, is it? We are all great programmers. I was just trying to. This the idea of this talk was to demonstrate that you know, I mean, a lot of people actually speak very complex things about data visualization. It is actually a job, and I'm not undermining the function that I think there was a great uh, DV talk right before mine, you know, like you know, which is like talking about data. But my intent is to all also look at my I ultimate aim to look at this example is to look JavaScript with its all its simplicity. Before we throw in all the jargons, all the micro frameworks, you know, GitHub integration, and all the all the craziness that JavaScript is bringing to the table today, it's like insane things we can do. Coffee script, SAS, Compass. Sometimes plain simple programming with JavaScript and some canvas and some really useful libraries, you can actually have a nice post lunch conversation like this. We actually built something. There was no empty promises thrown there. Now with all this great power, you can conquer the world. No, we didn't say that. We actually did something. Which is actually pretty trivial and simple, but that is also something which I want to tell every aspiring JavaScript developer. To. It's great to know about all the new micro frameworks and new ways of doing stuff, but sometimes writing plain, simple, <coughs> DOM-based JavaScript actually can give you great results. It is actually, honestly speaking, I this actually took me just a little more than what I did. I actually built it as as a demo, which took like three hours for me to build. So before I, I stop, and I'll just show you uh, something which is a little more interesting. Uh, so have you seen this? Yeah. This is brilliant. I have never seen a chart like this. Somebody actually wrote a blog post <laughs> completely killing this, saying this is the shittiest bloody data visualization I've seen. I am an average village idiot. I love this visualization. Okay, I'm not going to prove somebody who did this because your data correctness is wrong. It is not such important information. It's about how many people downloaded Rebecca Black's 
goddamn what is that song friday friday yeah it deserves only that much importance in terms of data safety <laughs> fuck data safety yeah sorry <laughs> i mean are you going to beat that <laughs> answer me your fuck yeah <laughs> 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 right so i just you know um you are you are uh, encouraged to or rather you are requested to or rather you are told to hang on damn come on man is not working okay so that's my blog i'll put that so this is something which i built similarly as a half hour project here you go like i mentioned i'm a deconstructing reconstructing guy so uh feel free to go look at this as well these are uh, interesting thoughts in dv so now that let's code this up now that we have coded this up beer etc today evening those are the coordinates <laughs> hey you said you'd also put a shameless plug about your band right? coming coming okay coming in the moment so etsyonom.com dot dot com slash tech is my blog um mostly assorted tech geek outs and there could be javascript could be action script anything that's on the client side uh, i don't discriminate i mean so i i would write if it is on the client i am interested if it's on the server you can go fuck yourself <laughs> so um twitter.com/xivram that's my twitter please follow me over there the more number of followers i have better hikes i get because it's one of my kpis in the office my manager takes it very seriously follow me on github is hardly any shit there but these these examples are there i just got onto github pretty recently xivram at adobe.com all the boring shit right me there right you know when you when you need something or you know when you really want to get things done write me there but if you want to just say hi those are the other channels i also uh, moonwalk as a musician like i mentioned facebook.com/agamtheband is my band Uh, we are actually half decent we actually play quite a few shows so uh he's surprised actually we didn't think so uh, <laughs> no mind so that's the reason uh, to to prove my claim go to reverbation.com/agam go check it the music is out there and next time we'll be playing in your city uh, do come and cheer and thank you, thank you.